Good morning, Mike Winkler here from QRadar, and I wanted to talk a minute about the architecture of the QRadar solution, and this is updated for September of 2016. So, for a small to medium install, I can do this all in a single box, right? So, we've got a web console, it's an event collector, it's a flow processor all in one, and to this, we add the threat feed that comes out from the internet, right? And this is how we spot bad DNS and spoofed IDs and yeah, spam servers and all of this good stuff. And it comes by default to this web console, so you have the intelligence built right into it. Um, after we get past this, right, and we start to get to some larger environments, we need a distributed model. So that uh, all in one becomes a web console to which I add any number of event or flow processors. So I say any number because some of my largest customers in the world are moving up to two million events per second. Um, off a two tier infrastructure just like this, we can add event processors or flow processors um, to your heart's content. And as it's kind of a big data architecture, right? Each one is the processing, is the storage, um, it's where all the queries go until the console calls for that data, right? And we can, um, we can distribute that however you like across the country or across the world. Some folks require a slightly more complex architecture than that. They have a lot of satellite data centers or they've got small locations they want to collect events from, but they don't really need a processor there. So I can take a small virtual machine and I can set it out there and it will collect up all of the log events from this satellite office and it'll send it back to that event processor in your data center. So you can make this a three-tier architecture if that's what works best for you. After that, I have a combined processor, event and flow. It's like it says, so if you have a mid-sized office you want to be able to grab both from, that allows you to do it on one machine. After that, I want to take a minute and I want to talk about Qflow. Qflow is a type of NetFlow collector that allows me to see the top 64 bits or a little more of the uh, layer f of the layer seven traffic, so I can tell you what's going on in a transaction. A lot of the times, we'll uh, fix three network problems before we find a security problem. But if you see scripts that have been running for years for machines that aren't there, or it's password change day, and um, every iPhone is spazzing trying to find the way to Active Directory because you changed the password in your workstation, or you know any number of these things, including um, you know Open FTP where it shouldn't be. There's a lot of great examples that I can see in the QFlow because it makes net flow smarter. After Qflow, I want to take a minute to talk about data nodes. Um, we're talking about some very large storage volumes in certain of these customer environments. And I have some clients that will require more than the native 40 terabytes of space in each of the event and flow processors. So onto the back of these, I can add a data node. It's an additional 40 terabyte of space, and I can even add multiples of them. So in the most extreme cases, I can add a quarter of a petabyte of storage to each um, event or flow processor. Although I will say I have never seen a request that's gone that high. After this, I want to talk about some of the um, add-ons to QRadar, right? We've left the central architecture, which is the part that I've just grayed out there. And now I want to talk about forensics and packet capture. So what this is, is a full packet capture device, and it sends that forensics information off to QRadar. So if I've got someone that was reading an Indonesian newspaper six days ago, and you want me to recreate what that was, no problem. Or if somebody's Gmail is sending out uh, files.bat, and you want to know what's in it, we'll just recreate it for you. So it's full forensic recovery, and it's tied to the offense cycle inside QRadar. So it's not just a place to go dig, and you can absolutely dig through the data to your heart's content, but it's a way to attach meaningful data to the offenses you found in QRadar. After this is Risk and Vulnerability Manager. We used to offer these as two separate utilities and they have been combined into a single offering, okay, as of uh, September 2016. So what this means is I have a vulnerability scanner, okay, where I can go through and I can scan your environment, or if you choose to, you can use other vulnerability scanners, your Qualys, your Nessus, your, um, any of these things, and um, I will import that scan results into QRadar. I also have Risk Manager, and what Risk Manager does is it is a passive listener, and I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna see all of your firewall and your router configs, and I'll be able to tell you if you have shadowed rules or if someone's been making changes to rules, or some things in your environment that could become a problem by running what-if scenarios. For example, um, I can run a rule that says, hey, I have these three servers that I can't update to current because of some software running on them, and if I change this rule on firewall number two, will it cause a vulnerability to be exploitable? Okay, so Risk and Vulnerability Manager allow you to pull vulnerability data into your QRadar environment and then map what risks that vulnerability data actually means. 
After this is something that we have, uh, it's called an app node. Now, as of September this year, um, haven't really used these yet, but these are kind of an up and coming thing for the infrastructure going forward. What an app node is, is very similar to a data node. And what this is going to allow you to do is when you start doing these extended functions of QRadar, which I'll talk about in just a couple of minutes, and if you realize eh, it's starting to slow my environment down, I can add these application nodes. Uh, same 128 gigs of RAM, 20 CPUs, 40 terabytes of space, so that I can distribute the processing model off even further, and rather than slow down your searches because you're using all these fun new features, it's going to allow you to extend the hardware infrastructure to whatever level of need you have. You know, on the topic of hardware, I don't want you to be thinking that QRadar is something that's an all hardware solution, which we can do that way, don't get me wrong. But we can also do the software, you can do it virtualized, we can do it hosted, we can do it MSSP. I've got customers doing this in Azure, I've got them doing it in SoftLayer, I've got them doing it in hybrid models, some mix, some match. So don't let uh, delivery format be an issue. QA will work however you want to do that. Okay, um, then I want to take a minute to talk about the App Store. This is something we shipped uh, right around July of this year, and it's in the back end of your QRadar, and it allows you to add all of these applications that import data into QRadar, or QRadar can send data to. And at the time of this recording, there's around 110 of them. And unlike the App Store on your iPhone or in Splunk or something like that, they have a couple of things in common. Number one, they're all vetted by my team up in Canada so that we know they're good apps, they're well-written. Um, they're all of valid security apps. I've got nothing that I'm looking at football scores or grandma's recipes or tracking your birthday. Absolutely everything in the App Store is something that is a good software, it's well written, we're sure there's no malware in it, and it actually solves a problem. Okay, and there's a bunch of apps there and some of them update all the time, some of them change all the time. Um, in that list of things is an acquisition of IBM from earlier this year is Resilient. And this is incident response planning. It's an incident response platform. And it gives you an automated way when something comes in from QRadar or anywhere else, and you're like, you have an incident and you're trying to map it through the proper process. Who needs to be informed? What needs to be done? When does it need to be happen? What if someone's on vacation? any of these things, all the way out to the legal concerns, because there's a full dictionary of privacy in this to say, hey, there's been a release of information that involves the credit cards of people in Wyoming, and this is the press release you would need to make, and this is the amount of time you have it. So resilient is something that we can set on top of a, on a SIM, and QRadar in this case, that will allow you to do full incident response lifecycle, okay? And that is one of the big plugins we have in our App Store. Um, after this, and this is something that we shipped also a couple of months ago, the behavioral analytics module. This is user behavioral analytics, and it maps the user behavior over time, over accounts, and over access. So I can tell when users are doing things that are out of the norm for them, or out of the norm for that class of users, and this is a for free add-on to your curator, just pull it down from the app store, and it's yours for the asking. Okay, after that, I want to cross the black line into Futureware just a little bit, and I want to talk about two things that will be available at right around the end of the year, right around the beginning of the year, 20, end of 2016, beginning of 2017, one of which is the DNS security analytics. Um, DNS is one of the major exfiltration channels for a lot of malware. So if you have someone that has spoofed DNS or bad entries or man-in-the-middle attacks or they're trying to exfiltrate data in DNS packets, um, you're already pulling all of this data into QRadar. So we're just giving you a way so you can look at it and tell if you're having DNS-related problems and we'll allow you to take action from there so that um, this will be a full DNS security analytics module and it's for free for QRadar users. It should be available right around end of year beginning in next year, right? It's across the black line to Futureware, so I can't give you exact times. And the last is uh, probably the most exciting of them, honestly. This is the Watson security module. This is something that allows you to um, get proactive knowledge of threats that no one's written yet, because it's reading all of the internet every night, the security blogs, Joel Krebs, or the Microsoft blog, or um, dark web, or any of these fun things, and it's going to make suggestions to you about things you should change in your environment based on up and coming ideas before the zero day exploit is even written. So that's particularly cool. 
And on top of this, Watson will go through in the case where something does happen and will do this first level of security analytics for you, right? So um, if I come back from vacation and I have an Excel uh, a spreadsheet I open up and didn't realize it was infected and it starts to jump across to some other machines, Watson's going to tell me, oh yeah, Mike came in, he was in the Bahamas, something executed and he got Laura and Dave's machines infected and here's a map of that, right? So Watson is absolutely cutting edge new tools that's gonna give some time back during the day to your security analyst by doing the low level grunt work. So I'm Mike Winkler and this has been QRadar for 2016.